is the third video on the Port Charon Sarnia ferry system. And as you look at these next three pictures, you'll see something that's common in all of them. And that is that there's two smaller ferries and one larger ferry. And that one larger ferry is the Omar Conger. It was the queen of the Port Charon Sarnia fleet. This is the way it was described in 1882. Port Huron Ferry Company New Steamer is one of the finest ferry boats on fresh water. It has been named Omar D. Conger in honor of the talented senator in 1882. The Omar Conger is 104 feet in length and 34 feet wide. The main aft cabin is about 20 feet square and is finished in an elaborate style. The doors, window frames, and moldings are made of walnut, and the woodwork is grained in imitation of mahogany and bird's eye maple. The floors of the cabin are covered with Brussels carpets and the seats upholstered with red plush. The hall and upper works are painted white and presents a fine appearance. The side cabins and alleyways are grained in oak. This steamer accommodates 800 people and is run as an excursion and ferry boat. Captain Chris Smith, recently of the ferry Beckwith, commands a new steamer. He has been connected with the ferry company for seven years and is a courteous and efficient officer. The Beckwith was part of the Porcher and Sarnia fleet. Originally it was a tugboat and then it was reconverted to a ferry for Porcher and Sarnia run. Later on it was sold to Sault Ste. Marie as a ferry there, and that's where this picture was taken. With all these people on it, you would think this thing would have sank. Here she's coming in the Black River, just coming past the railroad bridge. And she looks pretty wide, taking up a lot of the river. She was almost twice as wide as the other ferries. And here's a photo in a familiar spot where we had uh, two other ferries, uh, the Grays Dormer and the uh, Hiawatha parked here. But uh, this is where uh, all the ferries parked here at one time or another. It's not often you get to see the underbelly of a ferry, but uh, here we see the Omar Conger in dry dock getting some repair work done. Here we see the Conger coming into the Sarnia dock. And this is a little bit more of an aerial view, but we can see her pretty well here. And then this was a postcard that shows the Conger leaving uh, the Sarnia dock. You remember in our last video we talked about that hill coming up from the dock shown here. But uh, this next picture shows what it looks like uh, today, or at least when this picture was taken. It's a fairly current picture. This picture is similar to the one that we saw when the Hiawatha was uh, docked here at Stag Island. This is the Conquer dock here. And you can see it seems like there's always a lineup uh, coming or going from the Conger or from whatever ferry it was. I also noticed the canopy that they had for sun protection on the second deck in the bow. I think the Conger would have been one of the favorite excursion boats because it was large and roomy and it was also fast. Here we see her on an excursion to Wallaceburg. And you can see what happens when everybody gets off to disembark. Uh, it's got a, quite a list of starboard there. This picture was taken at Wapo Island. I think this little boat here is interesting. They're really tearing up the place. Everybody seems to have their hats on though, except this brave lady on the very top deck. She's out there like the Statue of Liberty. Here we see her coming back from the Sarnia run, crossing past with a little gray stormer. The ferries ran year-round, unless, of course, like this picture here, you had an ice jam and they were iced in. Whenever they could, they made it across. Here it seems uh, like the Conger is trying to uh, help this car ferry, uh, probably trying to free it in the ice. In this photo here, the boiler is going full steam ahead. Smoke is just pouring out of her. 
but it was that same boiler that would cause the death of the old Mark Conger. It was a peaceful Sunday afternoon, March 26, 1922. The Conger was lying at her wharf in the Black River, about 50 feet above the dock with which the ferries take on and discharge passengers, preparatory to going on her regular run at 3 o'clock when, at about 2.20, her boiler exploded. As a result of this explosion, the four members of the crew on board at the time were killed. Her upper works demolished, her hull badly damaged, and she sank at her dock in Black River, a total loss. One minute she looked like this, and the next minute she looked like this. Superstructure was a complete loss, and the hull rested on the bottom of Black River with holes in the side. In this photograph, uh, you can see W.J. Scott Contractor in the background. And uh, in 1922, it was at 315 Quay Street. And Quay Street started at the river, so it gives you a pretty good idea where it was. Here we see a couple of fellows in a canoe checking the conger out. The force of the explosion was such that the entire boiler was lifted out of the vessel and dropped, practically intact except as split by the explosion, on the roof of a house some 200 feet away on the other side of Quay. Fortunately, all the whole family was at the movies that afternoon and escaped injury. The paper said this, death and destruction when Ferry Omar D. Conger blows up and sinks in the Black River. Explosion rocks city of Port Yearn and businesses, houses are wrecked, while four members of the crew loses their life. Ferry Hiawatha was badly damaged and the house of William Smith demolished as boiler crashes through roof. Many people injured by flying debris, lost 100,000 and in no insurance. Hundreds view the scene of destruction. Telegraph poles along Quay were blown over. Business windows were damaged and broken all the way from Military to Huron Avenue. Five of the most seriously injured had been attending a memorial service at the Falk Funeral Home on Military Street. The boat's 200-pound radiator tore through the walls of the crowded chapel. Another piece of debris, a davit that holds the lifeboats, went as far as Griswold to Peg Tire Company down near 4th and Griswold, and it's reported that he used that piece of debris to hang a sign for the next 20 years, pegged tire right out front, with a davit holding it on. Henry McMorrin, former congressman and owner of the Port Huron and Sarnia Ferry Company, stood on the ferry dock Sunday afternoon, gazing at the wreck of the ferry Omar Conger, while men worked in vain to recover two other bodies. One body was Located Well, actually, two bodies were located on top of a coal pile near the Omar Conger. The other two, they had to send a diver down to locate the bodies and bring them up. It is a loss of life that I deplore, said Mr. McMorrin. Those men who are gone were faithful men. There's no way in which I can account for the accident except that the water in the boiler was low. The boat was to have left at 3 p.m. on her first trip of the day. The boiler had been overhauled three weeks ago and thoroughly inspected. I carry no boiler insurance on any of our boats. Therefore, the conquer is a total loss to me. The loss would not bother me. It is the loss of life that I deplore. It was a terrible tragedy. In this photograph here, you can see part of the cabin uh, with the window sills uh, still intact, but the window is gone for sure. There's two of them there. And the other debris uh, that you see around the uh, site of the counter. In this photograph here, we get a good look at the uh, stern of the Hiawatha, the ferry that was just in front of the conger. And you can see the destruction that uh, took its toll on the Hiawatha as well, especially on that second deck. It was almost a tragedy in my own family as well. My grandfather, William Hunt, was a crew member of the conger. 
and he was scheduled to work that shift, but they switched shifts for some reason. And he was home when that uh, conger exploded, and he should have been on the conger. My grandmother said that it was so fortunate, it was terrible that the other man lost his life, but at the time she had four children and she didn't know what she would have done if he would have lost his life. In our next video, we'll see something that happened that changed the face of the Portuguese Sarnia fairies.